And now I would like to invite uh, Rick West uh, to the stage. And we would love to hear his thoughts on, well, I think we'd like to hear his thoughts on think versus thought, mobile engagement at the point of influence. Did I get that right? You got it right. I think so. Okay, so I'm here today to speak to you um, somewhat from a re researcher's perspective. Believe it or not, I've been out there at a trade booth for two whole days, and we were conducting a little bit of research, kind of asking some questions along the way, and we started to, to hear some common things along the way. And, and these few slides, believe it or not, I predicted exactly how this is going to play out. So let's see if I'm right, based on what I heard today. Uh, I'm going to start with a story. Here's a story. that Most people recognize what this is, right? Little head nods, recognize what this is. There are really three main ingredients in this particular dish. The first ingredient, the obvious one is tomato, right? The next one is mozzarella cheese. And our third one is basil before, right? And balsamic vinaigrette, right? So four, four major ingredients. When we look at this, there's really one primary ingredient that can make or break this dish. Now, my wife and I were having dinner about a week ago. We had this dish. After the first bite, she said, Rick, those tomatoes are amazing. It tastes just like someone went behind the restaurant and pulled a tomato off the vine and put it on that plate. It's amazing. And she happens to be a registered dietitian, so she said, you know, Rick, I, I continue to tell people as you think about health, the closer you get to the vine, not only the healthier you will be, but the higher quality of meal and the more nutrient and more nutritious an item will be, closer to the vine. So when you think of that in terms of research, let's play this out a little bit. The vine's on the left, consumption on the right, and there's time and distance in the middle. When I think of that dish in front of us, for the most part, I could pull virtually any balsamic vinaigrette off the shelf, whether it's a month old, two months old, I would be fine, right? Even the cheese to some degree, unless we're outside with the, the goat kind of pulling, we could make sure the cheese is okay but probably not a good idea to have a two or three month old tomato. But for all of us, as we look at time and distance and vine versus consumption, we realize those are two key barriers that we all face when we're trying to prepare a meal. Let's assume that price is all relevant. So let's look at the top part of this. If I had the time and it was close, I could go to a farmer's market on the left. I might save money, but I know intuitively, we all agree intuitively, those products on the left-hand side at the farmer's market should be better for me. If I don't have as much time and I'm running into the distance issue, I could stop by the grocery store and that would be fine to pick up those tomatoes as well. What about these two items? I could pick up something in a package or something in a can. All those are tomatoes, all those would be okay, but we all know intuitively if I want the best value and the best taste, I want to go as far left as I could up the food chain, as close to the vine as I could get. If you think about that analogy and how it plays up in our world, that's the new term that I want us to begin to use here. And I want you to think about this term, whether you are a provider of research or you're actually engaging an agency, you need to begin asking the question, based on the research that I'm doing, how close to the vine do I need to get? How close to the vine can I get to get the best possible research for what I'm trying to do? So let's play that out for us. When I look at the same thing, it's time versus distance, right? Still comes in. And let's look at thinking versus thought. I mean, you guys have been here for two solid days, and if you've been, if one thing has hit you pretty hard, it's what? Mobile research is the best. Mobile research is the best. Far left-hand side, far left-hand side. Get as close as you can. It's all about what people think, what people think. You don't want to use recall. Listen, I live in that world. I mean, I came from the research world, and with field agent, we're, we're driving whole mobile research. But is that really true with every instance? I'm here to free you guys and give you guys permission to at least ask the question, well, wait a minute. Haven't there been billion dollar brands built on traditional research? Maybe it's not as bad as I thought it was. Maybe traditional research isn't that bad after all. Maybe. So let's talk about it for a second. Time and distance. If I look at this, whether it's a phone call or someone in person, if I had the time to go out and talk to 500 people in person, that's probably not a bad idea, right? If we all had the time to go interview 500 people over the next week, probably not a bad idea. But in most cases, because of distance and time, 
we probably can't get that close to the vine with the technology and methodologies we have today. Let's play down the bottom side. Field agent comes here with mobile, you've got online research. All of these are viable methodologies. The question becomes, based on the time that I have and the distance that's in, in, in front of me, how far left do I need to go and what methodologies do I have to play out? Now you just heard Roddy talk about point number 10, right? Point number 10 said, supplement mobile with current methodologies. If you're a researcher out there today and you've been doing research for 10 years or 20 years, there's nothing wrong with using traditional methodologies supplemented by mobile technology. It makes complete sense. There are other opportunities when you realize it makes no sense at all to use traditional methodology because I'm going to jump into mobile. It makes complete sense. So A, I want to give you permission to push back a little bit. But more importantly, begin to ask the question, what technology, what methodology do I use to go as far left as I can in the food chain to get as close to the vine as I can to begin to understand what people are thinking versus what they thought? So let's play that out a little bit. You know, we've coined a term called point of influence, and there's really those three moments of truth, right? You've, all, you've seen these, you've read about ZMOT, so let's talk about those. If I'm engaging a client, I'm really asking the question, are we trying to really focus on that zero first or second moment of truth? The first one, near and dear to my heart, it's all about shopping. It's the engagement that happens from a shopping standpoint. What happens there, what decisions am I going to make, whether it's at retail or, or inside of a store, uh, whether I'm making that decision online, really understanding the first moment of truth. The second one's also fairly intuitive, right? The whole issue of consumption or service. When I bought it, did I like it? If I liked it, did I win at the second moment of truth? Zero kind of has thrown us all into a little bit of a loop. And our friends at Amazon came up with it, and Google, they were coming down this path and said, listen, when you really try to understand this, we have to better understand how people are researching and what decisions they're making before they make a purchase. So Amazon would argue, listen, forget about Walmart, forget about Kroger, forget about the shelf. People are going to look at our five-star ratings before they ever go shop. Fair assessment, right? So as you're engaging your research partners, you need to be able to, to address it in these ways. So listen, Rick, as a mobile research provider, what methodologies do you have that's going to help me really win at the zero moment of truth? What methodologies in the first or second? Or based on my traditional research that I've been doing for the last you know, five, 10 years, or the last couple of years, how can you come alongside and supplement that to bring that to fruition? And what is that really going to look like? How is it going to play out? So you have to think through that. Case in point, you've heard it 100 times, the power of the crowd. The crowd is what's driving this conversation today. I think it's around 1.4 billion smartphones today, like 2.5 billion next year. It's going to continue to grow. So it's naive for all of us to stand up here and say, well, just ignore mobile. You know, it, it's, going to, it's going to be passe. We're past that, right? Yet at the same time, it's also naive for me as a technology person that runs a mobile research company to ask you to throw away tried and true methodology that's been delivering multi-million dollar and billion dollar brands over the last few decades. It's naive for me to say that as well. So the question we have to ask as researchers, agencies, and clients is how can we work together to supplement this big thing called the crowd with these little computers in their hands? How do we supplement what we're doing so that we can go win? Because it's really, really important to think about how mobile wins and how that plays out. For us, we know that mobile wins really in four key areas. The first one is coverage. I mean, almost every other person here talks about, well, I could reach this person. I could reach that person. It's true. The coverage is amazing because virtually any location that you're going to find around the globe, you're going to find smartphones and access to people that you never had before. Think about the cost implication. You know, I really can do screeners, and I really can have people go inside of stores, and we're talking about $5 and $10 interaction, not hundreds of dollars. I mean, it's 20 cents on the dollar. It's 50 cents on the dollar. The, the mobile data capture is so significantly lower, it's amazing. That being said, for all the, uh, the purchases of research out there, don't forget the front-end methodology and design versus back-end reporting, that didn't change, right? Mobile methodology did not change the front and back-end. So there's still quality work that has to happen. Finally, from speed, as you think through that, I talk in hours and days. Clients don't show up to me and say, hey, Rick, could you do this mobile research for me? I think you can get it back by August 1st. I say, are you kidding me? I'll lose the report by August 1st. I mean, it's, it's literally hours and days associated with time versus weeks and months. 
And then finally, point of influence. Remember, those three key points are really, really important for everyone in this room to understand, is that if you really want to know what people are thinking, mobile allows you to do that. So I'll play this out for you to say, this is your mantra, and this is how I challenge my brick and mortar friends that are out there, and how I challenge everyone across the table for me. Remember, I'm never more than two meters, any more than six feet away from any of your shoppers. Put the outer box on the phone, they're standing in the shower, they're streaming Pandora, the phone's in the shower with them, right? It's by your bed as an alarm clock. It's in your car. It's never very far away from you. So because of that, and because of the access that we have, mobile makes tremendous sense. So again, what I'm leaving you with today, giving you permission as researchers to push back on the throw everything away, understand that tried and true methodology, you're gonna to continue to use that, but we are all naive if we do not have a provider of mobile research with us, we don't have our own solution, or we don't have our own partner, because it's simply not gonna be okay in today's world not to have a mobile solution. It's also not okay, and I'm giving everyone here permission to say, when someone says throw everything else away and only use mobile, it's okay to push back and say, I don't think so, not so fast. Because there's a lot of bright, smart people in this room that have been doing things for decades and it's all been right. But mobile simply changes things and it gives you a brand new tool to add to your arsenal. Thanks for your time today. That was excellent, thank you so much. Questions from the audience? In the meantime, I had one. What's the best way to make a decision on which of the tomatoes to buy, so to speak? Is there a smart methodology one can follow? Is there, there are three key questions to ask yourself. Any recommendations? In, in most that? cases for us, we do talk about that time parameter, and we also talk about numbers. Uh, there are often times that you've uh, conducted a six-month ethnography and you're having the conversation with the general manager of your client and you said, listen, here's exactly what we're doing. And that general manager says, what about this, this, and this? And you're saying, are you kidding me? I spent six months doing this study and you want me to go back and answer those three questions? Mobile comes in and says, you know what? By tomorrow afternoon, we'll have everything you're looking for. So speed and that time is really, really important. Also from a coverage standpoint. Uh, we do a lot of mobile shop-alongs as an example. And for years, we've been doing traditional shop-alongs. We go inside of stores, we spend time with shoppers. I might be able to knock out six, eight in a day, maybe 10 at most. Well, now I can sit in my office, crank out 20, 30, 40 of those, and be able to engage them in ways I never could before. So numbers and time really drive the conversation around mobile. Any other questions out there? If no more questions, thank you so much. That was great.